What's up, Ringside Collectibles and WrestlingFigures.com fans? I'm here with an extremely, extremely special guest today that we're not only honored to have uh, on Ringside Collectibles programming, but we're honored to host her first ever AEW wrestling action figure. I'm joined by referee Aubrey Edwards right now for Hello. an unboxing. Hey, Aubrey. Say Ooh, hey to hi. everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. There she is. There she is. I, I love your AEW shirt, by the way. Yeah, Excellent we actually choice. got these. We did a um, uh, benefit with uh, Pause Chicago and Pro Wrestling Tees uh, during the pay-per-view week. So we put a little three on there because they know my gimmick. I, I tend to count to this number. So it was a really, really well done custom T-shirt. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. It, it's, it's cool to see a great style and uh, I'm, I'm glad you're glad you're making it look good. So, Aubrey, I see you have a big box over there. Is, could, could that be from Ringside Collectibles by any chance? I, I think so. Oh, I went that's to exciting. I went to the desk at the hotel and said, I have a package. And they're like, who's it from? I'm like, I don't know, which sounds a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny kind of stepping out of the conversation. I'm like, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> it's a giant pile of paper. Um, that pile of paper is almost as uh, as famous for people opening Ringside Collectibles packages as, as you can get. Whoa! Uh, oh my God, there's there's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, um, that's exciting. <laughs> so, I don't know if you want me to start with the big thing or the little thing first. Show show us uh, show us the biggest thing you got in there. Let's start with that. Oh God, look at this thing! Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. So this is. Um, the AEW Wrestling Authentic Scale Ring for Double or Nothing. Uh, and if this is the cereal box, here's me, the prize inside. Look um, at that. So here's, here's how you get me, I guess. Exclusive Aubrey Edwards figure included. Featuring um, Aubrey Edwards. Uh, also, look, the packaging. So this is the a Ringside Collectibles exclusive. This Authentic yep. Scale Ring, not going to be found in any retail stores or anything like that. Exclusive online to Ringside Collectibles. There's the seal. The, yeah. the seal of approval looking good. Uh, we've got that gold foil packaging on the on the box. As you can see, it gets a little shiny there. Um, very, very cool. How does it feel, Aubrey, to, to have, uh, have yourself as an action figure, especially with the place that makes you such a wizard and such a trailblazer, uh, the entire ring? Yeah, it's... Uh... I was trying to like think about like words to describe it and I'm at a total loss. Um, I mean, it's awesome. Like period. Like that's, that's great. But like, it's, you mentioned like trailblazer and I, I always hate saying it, like put it myself over and stuff, but like how many referees have had action figures, right? Like I did some research, like Earl Hebner had one. And then I think like Shawn Michaels had a referee action figure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a couple more that I'm probably missing, but uh, yeah, so this doesn't happen very often. So the fact that there's me in there is wild. <laughs> you are you are on an, an extremely special short list, I would say. You're right. There's been, even when there have been uh, referee action figures in the past, at times they've been a little faceless, you know, there's no um, likeness to them or anything. They've been so, the referee. So. The referee, exactly. <laughs> but this is... Here we have uh, referee Aubrey Edwards, and and we're really excited. And I, I just want to say it's a it's a privilege to be able to to uh, be part of giving you your first wrestling action figure. So. Yeah, bro, this is this is so dope. Oh, I love it. I love it. Like it's got Santana Ortiz and the Young Bucks on the front, two of the greatest tag teams in the world. Uh, I love refereeing both their matches. I've only done like two Young Bucks matches, but they were mm -hmm. both really awesome. Uh, Santana Ortiz, I get to work with a lot. On the back, it's got Matt Hardy, Ortiz, uh, Hangman, Sammy. Like, man, it's like, oh, cool. I get to ref all these matches in real life and I'll get to ref them in people's living rooms too. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, quite a roster. Uh, also, yeah. big box, right? So the ring is, uh, I think, 22.4 by 22.6 inches. So um, yeah. it's massive in size compared to what folks might find you know in a, in a standard store for for a wrestling ring so it also has authentic aew details as listed uh, and for bubble turnbuckles yeah this is dope when you're ready we're, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some of those but first before we do that uh let's see what else you got in your in your box what, what, what else came came for you today uh, there's i have a lot of cool friends i can play with um 
So first off, we have uh, Hikaru Shida. Ooh, perfect. Former, former champion, one of the longest reigning champions in AEW history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, awesome, awesome competitor. I love working with Shida. I feel like she's one of those wrestlers that makes every other wrestler better. Um, and she's hilarious, like absolutely amazing sense of humor. That's cool. And then we've got, ooh, ah, I recognize that got, guy. Yeah, we've got a John Moxley here. Check this out. He looks all grizzled and Moxley esque. Mox esque. Mox esque. There we go. Also, have the, the championship title, uh, which he won from Chris Jericho at Revolution in 2020. I refed that match. Uh, so that's dope. Um, we got, uh, let's see, we have Best Bout Machine, Kenny Omega. Check that out. Oh, man, that's awesome. Kenny always has the greatest gear. So much detail and good gear, good articulation on these figures. We know that your your ref Aubrey figure has some decent articulation, and obviously we'll get to that. But uh, yeah. to see some of the other figures, it's it's pretty awesome. Let's see, we've got Throne Breaker uh, Cody here with with actual Throne Breaker. Ooh, <laughs> He's got the sledgehammer. Cool. <laughs> I like the addition of the weight belt. Uh, as, as Cody is known to wear to the ring, the gold mm -hmm. blue tights from the very, very first Double or Nothing. So this is uh, actually very good because this is a Double or Nothing ring. So pretty fantastic. Um, we have this other action figure that I don't really care about too much. This is like Britt Baker or whatever. Like she's cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Um, not at, like least, at least you're honest whatever. about it. <laughs> I mean, she says I'm a conspirator, but... Can we open the big thing now? Let's do it. Yeah, please. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Let's 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 get cracking. No, I mean, this is like I got the text yesterday, like, oh yeah, there might be other stuff in there. I'm like, don't tell me that. That's like <laughs> you don't tell like a kid on Christmas Eve, like, oh hey, here's this giant present you don't get to open. <laughs> I'm gonna make a prediction. I'm gonna say that you want to get your hands on your actual figure first, and as opposed to getting your hands on on the ring and building that first. I think part of it will come down to how this is packaged. Um, a <laughs> good point. Good point. Because uh, as, as there is now paper all over my hotel room, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to make it a little bit less of a mess. So, That's the best kind of mess. <laughs> I know, but I also don't want to like hurt the box, right? So I'm trying yeah, to like be yeah. cautious. I also did my nails this morning, so I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you were right. <laughs> we have really we have our right. answer. Yeah. I mean, it's right there. How could yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. How could you not? That's okay. Oh my god. Okay. Let's put this guy. Oh, like I'm delicately placing everything. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Look at me. Look at that. It has it's like its own individual uh, plastic case there, and very. You, I can see your hand accessories. The the one and yeah. one and two counts in there. Yes, because those numbers I often count more than actually three. So, <laughs> um, pretty good. The thing that I really like about this, let me actually see if I can bust this open. Oh, there's more tape, more tape. Got some ties in there. Uh, it's mostly all just tape, thankfully. Ah. So, just holding me back, holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's probably watching this going, you're using my scissors wrong. <laughs> Come on, mom. I know, right? I'm trying here. Ah. Okay. Man, I don't... <laughs> you guys really make this, like, this is going to ship very, very well, like, because this, this thing is in there. We, we it's okay and we we had a feeling it might take a, a slight bit of time and, and that's all right we'll uh okay. it, it, it's, it's worth it in the end right so i'm protected i appreciate it yeah hey look at yeah. her very cool check it out i look at the likeness that's like does it feel like looking at your your miniature evil twin or what it, it feels like you guys needed to add more bags under the eyes for it to be accurate, but <laughs> I appreciate the creative licensing you did. That's not me. That's Jazzwares. We'll tell. I'll tell Jazzwares that we like we uh, we we think that looks good, <laughs> but it's a great head scan. It has your ponytail there, which is yep. even even cooler because that's a that's almost as uh, as as famous as you are at this point with the the ponytail there. I gotta keep it out of my hair, otherwise uh, we have a blind ref situation and nobody likes that. <laughs> 
So I like uh, the knees are completely articulated. Mm -hmm. you, we've got your uh, your ring slacks there. Your your uh, do, do the do the shoes match what you would wear accurately when refing? They are black. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the black shoes. Shoes are nothing special. The shoes are nothing special. It's just okay. fine black athletic shoes. The pants though, the pants are uh, those are a little bit trickier because finding black athletic pants that look good on TV in women's sizes is really. Uh, really difficult a little challenging <laughs> but you you make it you make it great for sure um yes. we have your your referee look your <laughs> like, uh underdog or, or superwoman right <laughs> fighting into the ring clearly um, <laughs> very cool to see cool to see also your referee shirt it has the aew stamp on there yeah um, and, and speaking of your nails that you referenced earlier how about the nails on the on the action figure so this is dope. And when I first saw the action figure, like I was crying and stuff because it, duh. Um, and I didn't realize it until after someone pointed it out on Twitter that my nails were done. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've been doing since literally my first show I ever ref was I've been painting my nails. Uh, when I was on the Indies, it was always like based on the color of the show I was on or whatever on the poster. Um, but this I end up doing like the town I'm in. So like right now I'm in New Jersey. So I'm doing Rutgers colors. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the nails that I actually had at the very first Double or Nothing. Very so, cool. Very, uh, very uh, nice detail, whoever whoever caught that one. So pretty dope. Oh, my God. This is so cool. Excellent. We're, we're glad you have one in hand now. How about uh, any any tattoos you have that are accurately reflected on there? I do. I, I have my, my, little, my little star tattoo. Oh, excellent. Just like it. Amazing. Yeah, it's pretty identical. I love it. Yeah, this is this is huge. Like, I think it's wow. one of those like when you okay. say like twenty two by twenty two on the box, you don't realize mm. actually how big that how is. Big that is. <laughs> oh, that's, that's nearly like two feet, guys. Like that's a lot. Yeah, even the buckle connectors look a lot like the buckle connectors which would and and uh, and do look in real life. So. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool to see how some of this detail comes to life with with an authentic scale ring. And um, yeah, I feel like immediately like all of the turnbuckles, uh, all the posts yeah. and stuff. So we've got the three loops. We've got oh man, yeah, this is great. These are the these are the turnbuckle pads. We've got can't quite see it yet, but we've got some Ollie wrestling, and then we also have some Double or Nothing logo ones. So those will be cool. Fun to open up. Cool. It's gonna be fun. I don't know if I had enough coffee yet to do this, but we're gonna we're gonna try. <laughs> okay, part one. So we gotta like put this guy and this guy together. Oh, sweet. Okay, so connected it in three places. Now we have a massive wrestling ring. Look so, at that. Look at that. In uh, in some indie federations, that's all that they would need. Is that right yep. there? <laughs> you get this and a crappy canvas, and that's about all you get. <laughs> um, uh -oh. Cool. Love it. And a nice little nice little canvas. And with all the new AEW signings, it has to be really exciting for you to kind of think about uh, the fact that there must be some dream matchups that you could officiate. Uh, yeah, so funny enough, uh, so you have CM Punk is the guy that got me into wrestling, also one of my favorite wrestlers, but my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite wrestler is Daniel Bryan, who is now known wow. as Anderson. Yes, so uh, yeah, my life is kind of crazy right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially because like I, I love refing technical matches like the mm -hmm. real map based sort of stuff uh we see that from like um uh daniel garcia is one of those guys and moriarty moriarty is also a great technical wrestler so uh brian danielson's kind of one of the like big really well-known technical wrestlers so not only do i get to work with you know my favorite wrestler ever but he also happens to have the style that i personally like to ref the most so i know he's calling out a lot of people right now he's calling out kenny omega quite a bit so uh I, w I wouldn't mind doing that one. You know, mm -hmm. just, just saying. These are our ring posts. So there's there's two of these with, with tag ropes. <laughs> so that's really cool. So to, to call out the tag ropes, that's actually something that um, has been left off a lot of these types of rings in the past. So this one has the tag ropes. It's been something that people have been asking for for a long time. And you know, you know this better than anyone. We got it. We got to keep it official, right? And and the tag ropes are there for a reason. 
So, <laughs> so funny enough, uh, tag ropes are not required to be used at AEW. Oh, no. Why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, it's, it's one of those things that wrestling has changed in style quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And having something as specific as making sure you hold a rope in order to have a legal tag kind of sometimes slows down the movement. Yeah. I understand uh, schools of thought and whatnot there, but not saying that because we don't require them doesn't mean we don't use them. So uh, there are a handful of people that prefer to use the tag ropes, FTR probably being the most famous people uh, on our roster. They, they are very consistently use the tag ropes old school. So uh, when they eventually get uh, action figures, those are going to be required. So. Excellent. Can, can you can you do me and the collective whole fan base of ringside collectibles a favor a possible favor in requiring the the tag ropes for the next tag match that you have <laughs> yeah, possibly sure, sure, <laughs> all right so we put all the ring posts in this ring is massive guys <laughs> I'm just looking at this like how the hell am I gonna get this home <laughs> <laughs> we got a ring skirt so we have the official double or nothing ring skirt. Now that is cool. So it's all yeah. completely connected. It's accurate, right? I mean, that that looks pretty spot on for how it was. So it's one of the things I really like about uh, our pay-per-views is all the logos stay consistent. You know, it's like a little hole. That your, gotcha. Uh, ring post goes in there. So Smart, it slides right down. Out. Yeah, you don't want your ring skirt to be sliding around like crazy. Yeah, that's great. And then... In the future, when there's uh, new ring skirts, it looks like they should be pretty easy to kind of change on and off. This is actually easier than putting on regular ring skirts. I might uh, tell the crew guys about this. Like, hey! Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's coming out nicely. Coming out great. Yeah. Oh, my God, this is so dope. Okay. There's a lot of these because we've got three at every post. What's that there? The, the buckle connectors? Yeah, these are the little... Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, nice. These are going to be super easy, much like the ring skirt. It's just one big rope that's going to connect around the sides. Cool. So it looks like there's a lot of rope, but really there's only three, which is perfect because that's exactly how many ropes we need. So, um, and these little, ah! oh, you can see what these look like. There's the buckle connectors. Very cool. There's the buckle. It's got a little hook and eye dealio. Mm-hmm. And then we've got the pad on top of it. So you can do cool tricks off of turnbuckle pads. Those are like, oh, are you struggling? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. Okay, cool. Uh, great. So we've got the turnbuckle helios on all of these. Like a cat toy right now. And the important thing with ropes is that <laughs> we call we call this in the hard buckle. Mm-hmm. And uh, if we're going for authenticity. The hard buckle needs to be in the same corner consistently. So, Ugh. so everyone at home, hear that now and hear that from referee Aubrey Edwards. The hard buckle needs to be in the same corner consistently yeah. for every rope. When you're setting this up, that's the way to get max accuracy. Oh yeah, we did it! Look at okay. that. Look at this. Yeah. That is looking extra excellent. We need to make some steps. which uh, conveniently can also be used as a weapon. So That's easy, true. This is, this is super easy. We have our top connecting with the bottom. Sweet. There we go. Steps. Fits nicely in with the corner. Nice. As you can see here, turnbuckle pads on here. Now, these aren't just turnbuckle pads. They're super smash turnbuckles. So super smash. That's what we that's what we uh, we see on the packaging here. So we'll get these these super smash turnbuckles on. Aubrey, what's your what's your favorite match that you've ever refed at this point? Oh man, uh, it's actually, I know that's a loaded question, but no, there's it's it kind of like it's changed a lot mm-hmm. since I started at AEW. But my current favorite is um, Sammy Guevara versus Sean Spears uh, because we were in Houston. And uh, Sammy had just proposed to his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sammy's a good friend of mine. Uh, Sean Spears is one of the wrestlers that I appreciate. Work- like, I, I love working with Sean Spears. He has a great understanding of the referee and how all that, how the referees and the wrestlers work together to tell a story. And it was just like such a good match. And there's a lot of times where I'm sitting in the match, just like freaking out, like, 
okay, don't mess this up, don't mess this up. Okay, we got to be off the air in like two minutes. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like not enjoying it. But that was one of those matches where I'm definitely in, like in the moment, just like, this is a dope match. Yeah, this yeah. This is good. So it doesn't happen often. All right. So let's look at these guys. So we've got Super Smash Turnbuckle Pad. Looks great. We've got, we've got two different kinds. We've got the AEW standard, and then we have the double or nothing. How does that work? Are, are all uh, 12 of them with either double or nothing or AEW, or is it like a yeah, mix? Yeah, so we have, we have eight that are double or nothing and four that are AEW. So ah, if got it. we're going for authenticity, um, the AEW are going to be in the middle uh, buckle or the middle rope, and then the double or nothing will be on the top and bottom. So that way then have a nice little consistent look. So, nice. Well, these are cool because they've got like a little cut open where the rope goes. And then, oh, this is awesome. These are like, oh, sweet. Okay, that's dope. Woo! As I drop them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ref. I have a hard time controlling people. You think I'm going to be able to control plastic parts? Like, <laughs> so check that out. Sweet. So they fold yeah. over. They fold uh, over. And they, they kind of like out. tuck in just like the real turnbuckles do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see from the top, from the side, from the side. Yeah. Awesome. And then we've got the tag groups hanging out on top. Yeah, this is awesome. This is very cool. Chris Jericho was kind of talking some smack about your figure <laughs> when it first came out. <laughs> uh did you see that you you did have a, a couple of responses but i want to know if you wanted to re respond to that now since uh since we're in the moment being able to talk about it so chris jericho and i uh we have a long history at aew mm -hmm. i was the uh ref for the match that he won the aew championship and i've ref probably like most of his matches i'd say there's maybe like a handful that uh that i haven't ref and uh, so Chris Jericho and I have, have a, a working relationship that goes way back to the very start of AEW, which is nice. And he's, uh, I mean, as, as all wrestlers are, they sometimes get upset that someone is telling them like, hey, you can't do that. Or, hey, maybe stop doing this. And yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so one of the things that Jericho does, if you actually look at any of my Instagram posts, regardless of it's selfie a post about my action figure or whatever you'll see chris jericho commenting on it and it's more often than not it's two thumbs down and <laughs> <laughs> this is what he does all the time <laughs> there was one time there was something i posted that was like nice so he did like one thumb up and one thumb down <laughs> like, what the hell man like i don't even know how to read this anymore like ah so he's, he's a funny guy i've uh i've learned a lot from working with jericho uh, I'm really thankful for all the matches that we've shared. And I mean, the, the title match between him and Paige was the biggest match in my career. Probably will be for a very long time. Um, but yeah, so anytime that someone's like, oh, did you see what Jericho said? I'm just like, but it was funny. The next day at work, we were at the, uh, at the venue and stuff. And he comes up to me and he goes, do you have a doll? And I'm like, uh, it's an action figure. <laughs> I, this, this coming from the guy who's had multiple action figures for you know over him. 20 years like come that's on that's what man. i told him i was like dude how many do you have he goes uh, a lot i'm like let me have one <laughs> <laughs> and it was real nice like yeah, congratulations blah 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 and you know it's i i owe a lot of where i'm at to him so i don't think that i would be sitting here in a hotel room in new jersey putting together a ring with my action figure had it not been for chris jericho so <laughs> he knows that and he'll never let me that. yay we did it okay so i've got beautiful for, i got three super smash pads on each corner that's awesome and that right there is an aew authentic scale ring Up. featuring double or nothing design oh and an exclusive now it is, <laughs> now it is. Featuring an exclusive referee Aubrey Edwards figure. I mean, I'm no booker, but um, we're going to have Miss Britt Baker, DMD versus Sheeta, who uh, had a match at Double or Nothing this past year. And uh, Britt Baker won the title. Uh, but in my version, 
uh, she is going to retain because uh, maybe she's a better wrestler. I don't know. What to say. <laughs> I'm not biased or anything. I'm kidding. Bias traps are bad. <laughs> they're out there. Not you, but they're out there. I mean, there. definitely not me. <laughs> Pull the belt. Hold it up until he counts me down and tells me we're clear. And then uh, we ref an awesome wrestling match. So, yeah. <sighs> Excellent. You're going to hit one. One. So, if there's a one. one. There's the one. Look at that. A little red nail. Oh, so good. You got a two. Two. Yeah. Two. Just two. Just two. And people may be wondering why I don't have a three. It's because I never actually hold up three. Mm-hmm. Because if there's three, I'm just calling for the bell. No. It sounds like it sounds like a, uh, a the right approach. Technically, this is also three because I'm pointing at our timekeeper, saying, "Hey, ring the bell." <laughs> <laughs> do a little do a little swing across. That's my my go to. Anytime I call for the bell, I just swing my arm across and rotate myself to the timekeeper. The thing that my coach used to do. That's how he used to call for the bell. Mm-hmm. So when I started at AEW, that was the way that I started doing it. It's like a little homage to him. Excellent. Yeah. And that, that just provides uh, for anyone that has this. some. I kind of want like TSA to pull it out of my bag. So it's be like, oh, let me explain this. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a doll. I, uh, I once was walking through the airport with a title belt in my carry-on. Mm-hmm. And of course, like my bag goes through and they look at it. They look at me. And they look at it. And then you see the bag like come off and go to the side. And you're just like, oh. <laughs> why <laughs> Why? and it made me appreciate every champion that has ever had to travel with a belt i'm just like man it's the one thing that referees don't have to do they don't have to travel with belts consistently so yeah, no. i don't get i don't get stopped by tsa to get asked like hey can i hold this no you didn't earn it <laughs> <laughs> So you said that you, you know, you've only been a wrestling fan for about a decade or so, but before that, uh, and, and in your younger years, what kind of toys did you have? Action figures, anything like that? Or were you collecting them I had at all? A lot of, uh, I had a lot of Ninja Turtle action figures. Yeah. Do you remember the one, like the car that would shoot the pizzas? I do remember um, that one. Yeah. 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 That one, that one I had. Um, I, I love had... the rev that the, the noise that it make when you turn it on. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could never quietly play with toys. It was always just like, oh yeah, no, you're playing with the pizza thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think those are like the primary ones I had. And then um, growing up, I was really into video games and I would collect uh, anything related to Legend of Zelda, which is my favorite video game of all time. So ah. there was a lot, number of action figures there. Uh, Majora's Mask, which was the second one on Nintendo 64. That one had a lot of really cool action figures, uh, but I kept those all in the box. Those, those were not played with. Excellent. You still have them, I hope. Those have probably uh, ma- matured in value a tad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's <okay>. sure. Um, <laughs> I would love to have them, but I was also responsible and bought a condo, which is much smaller than the place I previously had. Uh, so uh, there is a uh, there was a wonderful 12-year-old girl who uh, was gifted a number of really awesome action figures. And as a big gamer herself, uh, she really appreciated them. So that was that was my one way of like, okay, if I'm going to give these up, at least they're going to someone who appreciates them and they're not just going to get immediately destroyed. So that was like your real life toy story three. So a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I, instead of going away to college, I was going away and getting a mortgage. So. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Was it, was it a snap or what? Or was this kind of like a challenging thing to do? What do you think? It was a snap. Is that a pun intended? Maybe. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was super easy and awesome. And it's it's cool because like there's already been rings available, but this one is legit like massive and cool and fits all of the wrestlers as you would see them on TV. So uh, the fact that there's like the actual canvas and the ring skirts and all that, like it's just it's so cool. There's just so much detail and love put into this. Cause like this is basically my office. Aubrey, thank you so much for meeting with us. Uh, I, it's great to see you put together uh, the Ringside Collectibles exclusive AEW Authentic yes. Scale Ring with the exclusive ref Aubrey Edwards figure, which we're so happy to have and so happy to see you get a hold of. Um, yes, thank you so if, much. If we have any other figures of you in the future, could we? would you want to do this again? Maybe, you know, oh, maybe yeah. we wouldn't have to put a ring together next time, but we, we'd love to unbox more stuff with you if, if you're interested. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I, I definitely noticed because wrestling is all about details. 
I know you guys have been saying first action figure, and I'm like, hey, hey yeah, no, there's there's gonna be more, right? Be more. 